Hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna preview the 2024 US Open men's final between Yannick Sinner and Taylor Fritz. And before I do that, let's talk about the semifinals. And let's start with Sinner against Draper. I'm very impressed with Draper's performance in this match. I thought that Sinner was gonna win this match more comfortably, but Draper is a very uncomfortable opponent. One of the best servers in the world. A rock solid backhand, heavy topspin forehand. He's gonna be a tough, player as he continues to improve. One of the things that Draper has lacked in the past and something that he's gotten a lot better at is performing well when the matches go to distance. And he did a really good job yesterday hanging with Sinner for two sets, but eventually the body and possibly his mind let him down and he was exhausted in that third set. And I thought that Sinner's level in the first two sets, which went 7-5, 7-6 in Sinner's favor, were not Sinner's top level. Now, you can make the argument that it was Draper who was responsible for Sinner making some uncharacteristic mistakes. Because again, being a lefty with those attributes, it's something that's tough to deal with for everyone, including Sinner. So the thing that surprised me was how difficult it was for Sinner to get the break because in both the first and the second set, so many of Draper's service games went overdue where Sinner had looks to get the break, but he just couldn't. Draper was hanging tough, playing some clutch tennis and important moments on the service games. But see, the thing about big servers, and this is gonna be something that's important when I talk about the TFO Fritz match, is that they wanna hold comfortably. When a big server has to fight to hold their service games, go over deuce multiple times. This is not good for a server's confidence. So while Yannick was making some unforced errors in some of the Draper service games, the fact that he was extending Draper service games, in my mind, it was only a question of time until Draper service games started to fall apart. Now, Sinner did get a break and won the first at 7-5. However, in the second set, which was more contested than the first set, Draper started having some physical issues. And in the post-match interview, Draper said that those physical problems started at 5-all. In the first set, continued all the way through the end of the match. And I'm sure you guys saw that Draper was throwing up on the court. He was sweating a lot, having a hard time holding his racket. And I'm gonna dedicate an entire video on how to prevent the racket slipping out of your hand because here in Southeast Florida, the humidity is sky high. And what happens with a lot of players, when the hand gets sweaty, the racket goes flying out of the hand and especially on the serve, this can result in a cracked frame. I've seen it many times. Also, when that racket starts to slip in your hand, you can lose control of your shots. But in any case, Draper was struggling physically a lot. And interestingly, at four all in the second set, possibly the best point of the match, where Sinner retrieved the ball that was behind him, where he slid backwards. And what happened to Sinner was exactly what happens to me when I try to slide. Uh, my foot gets stuck and I go flying. So that's what happened to Sinner, uncharacteristically so, because Sinner is a great slider. His foot got a little bit caught. He went flying and he braced his fall with the palm of his hands, which is exactly what you're supposed to do. If you fall with the racket in your hand, or if you fall on your elbow or on a different part of your wrist, this can cause a severe injury. But falling on the palm of your hand is generally safe, and you might be hurting a little bit and be sore, but you're probably not gonna break anything. And spectacularly, Sinner got up from that fall and hit maybe the best forehand he's hit the entire tournament an absolute laser beam of a passing shot off a draper overhead but then after the point he started shaking out his wrist and i was initially worried but then when i saw the tape it didn't look like he actually hurt his wrist that much so center ended up toughing that second set out in tie break and draper completely fell apart physically and mentally in the third set, which Sinner won comfortably 6-2. So again, this was a super impressive performance from Draper. I didn't expect this match to be so tight. This was his breakthrough moment, and I'm expecting to see big things from him in the future. Now, the Fritz DFO match was such an entertaining one because there was so much at stake. As I talked about in one of my earlier videos, I regarded Taylor Fritz to be slightly above the rest of the guys that he came up with. Because Fritz, TFO, Opelka, and Paul all came up together. They're all of a similar age. And while this match was going on, 
the entire time I had the head-to-head -head record in my mind. I just kept thinking Fritz won six matches in a row against TFO. Fritz has not lost to TFO on tour since 2017. This is going to come into play despite the fact that it looked like TFO was going to win for three and a half sets. So the first set started a little bit shaky from TFO where he got his serve broken, but then he turned it on and started hitting very aggressive into the corners. And he was putting Fritz in very defensive situations. Now what saved Fritz in this match was a serve because after losing that first set 6-3, Fritz started serving incredibly well. See, they had a great camera angle early in that first set, and they were showing Fritz from behind eye level, and you can exactly see where he was tossing the ball. And I felt like in the first set, Fritz was leaving a lot of his tosses at 1 o'clock. Some of them even went to 1.30, 2 o'clock area. And then in the second set, it appeared that Fritz was keeping his toss between the 12 o'clock and 1 o'clock area. And he was mixing up his serve a lot more. It seemed like he was slicing a tremendous amount of serves in the first set. So Fritz became more aggressive with his serve in the second set and started holding serve very comfortably. He had a lot of love holds in the second set. And deep in that second set at 6-5, Fritz got a look at a break and capitalized on it. Now, a super interesting thing happened early in that third set. And... After holding pretty much the entire set to love, Taylor Fritz played a terrible service game, the first game of the third set. And that's a very dangerous game for a big server. It doesn't appear to be that important because it's love, love after all. But see, often what happens is you win a set and your intensity goes down a little bit. Now, on the other hand, TFO's intensity might have gone up a little bit because he knows that sometimes the server's intensity can go down. So a possible combination of both factors resulted in Fritz getting his serve broken in the first game of the third. And TFO was serving well, controlling the points, being aggressive on his service games. He won that set comfortably off that one break. And now in the fourth set, with TFO being up two sets to one, I felt like TFO had the advantage. And if you remember, when Fritz was up 3-2 in the fourth, and it was game point TFO on his serve, and he hit that inside-out forehand with that extended grunt afterward and got the crowd all excited, I thought that TFO was going to get the break at 3-all. It just seemed like all the momentum was on TFO's side. But then at 30-15, on Fritz's serve, we had possibly... One of the best rallies of the entire match, a 31 shot rally where Fritz went from playing a tremendous amount of defense to all of a sudden dominating the point, playing offense, pinning TFO in the back of the court, making him hit slice backhands, and then finally hitting a forehand cross court winner. Now, in the post match interview, TFO was asked whether this point was the turning point of the match, and he said no. He said the turning point came much later. Interestingly, they asked Fritz the same question, and Fritz said that he was extremely exhausted after that point. But but he didn't want to let TFO know that he was exhausted. Now remember what I said about Draper versus Sinner, how it's not good for a server to play these super long rallies and extended service games. A big server wants to hold comfortably. That's how a big server collects confidence on the service games. So while a lot of people are attributing this particular point as the turning point of the match, in my opinion, the turning point came much later because despite TFO losing this game and somewhat conceding the next two points in that game because at three all 40 15 fritz serving in the fourth set tfo hit a lightning fast forehand return winner that you could identify as a tank shot and on the very next point he didn't really try to get the serve back in play and fritz hit an easy ace the next game however when tfo was down three four he held comfortably and he was actually playing really well all the way to being down five four in that fourth set up 40-15. That, in my opinion, is where the match turned, and that's exactly what TFO said in the press conference. It is not that long point that flipped the match. It was the fact that he served two double faults in a row, up 40-15, down 5-4 in the fourth. That destroyed his confidence because he ended up getting broken in that game, and he looked completely out of the match mentally and physically. Now, if you remember, Alcaraz cramping against Djokovic a couple of years ago at the French Open. Alcaraz wasn't cramping because he was out of shape. Alcaraz was cramping from tightness, from the pressure of the moment that he was feeling. And it is my belief that TFO's physical problems stemmed from the pressure that he was feeling. He simply got tight. But see, tennis goes two ways. While TFO now was struggling mentally, 
and physically, Fritz was on the top of his game. And he started dominating not only his own service games, but also he started dominating the return games. And I actually thought that that fifth set was going to go six love in Fritz's favor because he was the far better player. So this is a super tough loss for TFO, but he can be proud because he was able to turn his season around. It's going to be interesting to see whether TFO can continue to play like this because one thing's for sure, he's a super exciting player to watch. But you know what impressed me the most? And this was somewhat confirmed by Taylor in his post-match interview, is that I always believed Taylor had a small mental block in Grand Slams. And the thing is that Taylor had proven himself to be the best player out of the group of Americans by winning a Masters 1000 in Indian Wells. That was a huge title for him. And Taylor said in the interview, it irked him that a lot of the other guys, Paul, Shelton, TFO had made a Grand Slam semifinal and he hasn't because he sees himself as the leader of that group, as the best player of that group. And look, there was an opportunity in the draw with Djokovic going out and it's not easy to beat Zverev and TFO in the quarterfinals and the semifinals of the US Open. So the fact that Fritz was able to make the final from the mental standpoint, this is a huge success for him. Now, does he have a chance to win the final against Sinner and make people stop talking about Andy Roddick. And I think Andy wants people to stop talking about him winning the US Open in 2003 too. Andy wants an American to win very badly, but unfortunately I don't think it will happen. So Sinner and Fritz played each other twice, both times in Indian Wells. And in 2021, Fritz beat Sinner. And last year, Sinner beat Fritz in three sets. So let's take a quick look at the strengths and weaknesses of both guys and try to figure out why Sinner is such a big favorite in this matchup. So on the forehand, I'm going to give both guys a check mark. While Sinner's forehand is one of the best in the world, I also think that Taylor has an amazing forehand. I don't think Taylor hits his forehand as hard as Sinner, but Taylor does have an aggressive forehand and he can dominate rallies with it. And it is a weapon. So I'm giving both guys a check mark there on the backhand clear check mark for Sinner. I am going to dedicate a video on the Taylor Fritz backhand, which is rock solid, but it is unorthodox. And Taylor Fritz, especially when he has to defend on the backhand side, has a disadvantage compared to Sinner. Sinner not only hits one of the hardest two-handed backhands that I've ever seen, but he also hits it with control. He has a lot of spin on his two-hander, and not only that, Sinner is extremely good at hitting aggressive from defensive positions with his backhand. When it comes to the serve, I'm gonna give both guys a check mark. And Taylor Fritz is one of the best servers in the world. And the serve is gonna be a key factor whether he's gonna have a chance to win this match. But Yannick Sinner has improved his serve tremendously. I made a video a while back on Sinner's serve development. He has tinkered with his technique quite a bit. But towards the end of 2023 and through the vast majority of this season, Sinner has been serving exceptionally well. So both guys get a check mark on the serve. Return of serve is a clear advantage for Sinner. Taylor does return really well, especially off second serves. But when it comes to returning first serves, I'm giving us edge to Sinner. And Sinner also can pounce on second serves as well. So Sinner gets a check mark on the return of serve. When it comes to the net game, Taylor shared a funny story in his interview and him and Tia are very close friends. And he said that every time Taylor makes a volley, TFO will look at him and smile because TFO thinks that Taylor has an atrocious volley. I actually don't think that Taylor's volley is that bad and he was actually volleying quite well in yesterday's match. And interestingly, Sinner was asked in the press conference what his weakness is and he said that shot selection sometimes can be poor and his volley can improve. So while both Taylor and Yannick are pretty decent volleyers, it's clear to say that the net game is not either one of their strengths. So neither of them will get a check mark in the net game department. The same can be said for feel. Both of these guys are not known to have a lot of feel in their games. But having said that, both Taylor and Yannick have gotten a lot better at hitting drop shots. So just like the volley, I'm going to leave the field department empty because it's not something that these guys utilize to win matches. All right, the next one is super tricky, and that's offense. And while Taylor is one of the best servers in the world, he can hold serves very comfortably. If we're talking about offense off the ground, once that ball 
is in play, Sinner has the clear advantage. The same can be said for defense. While Taylor surely fights and defends well, I think the difference in the defense is that Sinner is able to do more from defensive situations, especially on the back end side. So Sinner gets a check mark when it comes to defense. And when it comes to movement, Yannick Sinner does not get enough credit. I think it probably has to do with the way Yannick looks on the court. He looks skinny, tall, and lanky, and it doesn't look like he moves well. But to me, Yannick is an exceptional mover. Of course, not quite as good as Alcaraz and Djokovic, but in my opinion, it's very close to that level. And when I talk about defensive shots, uh, what is required to be really good on defense? Well, it's movement. And just like Djokovic, just like Alcaraz, Sinner is able to play with incredible power from incredibly defensive positions where movement is key. And that's why I'm giving Sinner a check mark when it comes to the movement part. And when it comes to the intangibles, this is where Sinner has an advantage as well. First of all, he spent less time on the court. He's going to be the fresher of the two. Fritz exerted a lot of energy to make it into this final, both against Zverev and against TFO. But also, the pressure of winning the US Open as an American has to be immense. And the problem for Fritz is that he has to do it against Sinner, who already has a Grand Slam. So it's for those reasons why I'm picking Sinner to win the 2024 US Open.